right, welcome back to Self, That's Sleep, Exercise, Love, and Food. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. I'm a board-certified nephrologist and obesity medicine specialist. And on this channel, we talk about everything related to nutrition and, of course, to my favorite topic, kidney health going on. So let's dive into a new study that just came out that's making the waves everywhere. And essentially, this was a study that says that keto diet can actually double your risk of cardiovascular events going on. The real question is, is, is this true and what is the lesson that you can take from it? So with that, let's dive into it. Now, ketogenic diet is really a low-carbohydrate, high-fat diet initially developed in the 1920s going on, and it was used for patients who had severe drug-resistant epilepsy because, frankly, there wasn't anything else going on, and it seemed to work very effective. It's also been shown to be very effective in things like migraines going on. So what happens is, essentially, you create a state in your body where you have ketosis, where your body turns to fat for energy going on instead of sugar. Now, the standard or typical ketogenic diet is about 70 to 80% fat. It's about 10 to 20% protein, and it ends up being about 5 to 10% carbs going on. There are other variations of ketogenic diet, just so you know about them. And these were created to make the diet easier to sustain over the long run. So the first one is the high protein ketogenic diet version. Essentially, this one is very similar to the standard diet, except you increase the protein. So there can be as much as 35% of the calories from protein, 60% coming from fat, and only about 5% from carbohydrates. Then there's the cyclical ketogenic diet. And the idea here is for Folks who need help with athletic performance or who are trying to build muscle and are very active, they may need some carbs, especially uh, in terms of one or two days per week going on. So this diet specifically has high carb days built into it, one or two days per week going on. And then the rest of the days are low carb standard ketogenic diet. And the final variation is called a targeted ketogenic diet. And this is not days, but is actually focused on events. For example, if you were going to work out, you might consume 20 to 30 grams of carbohydrates before your workout so that you have some extra energy to be able to perform at your peak in terms of exercise. One of the misconceptions that comes around ketogenic diet is when it comes to weight loss, folks feel that it's just because you're cutting out total calories. But it turns out ketogenic diet actually has some interesting mechanisms. One of them is the high fat content leads to a satiety impact. So in other words, it makes you feel full so you have less cravings going on. The other thing is you release less of hormones like insulin and ghrelin. And ghrelin, as you know, is the appetite stimulating hormones. So it actually makes sense to have less of it. And finally, ketone bodies themselves can actually play a role in reducing overall hunger going on. Now, there's a tiny, tiny effect, what we call the thermic effect of food, where converting fat and protein to sugar takes more energy than just taking sugar directly and using that as fuel. But that's a small impact going on. So with that background, let's dive into this study. Let's see what the data shows. This is an observation study that just got published in 2023 with Latan and colleagues. And the concept here was that they wanted to look at a ketogenic, low-carb, high-fat diet and to see how does it correlate with things like LDL, apolipoprotein B, and with major adverse cardiovascular events or MACE going on. So this was a prospective population-based cohort study. They used participants from the UK Biobank database, and they ended up identifying participants between 2006 and 2010. Ages were about 40 to 69 years old. And these folks completed 24-hour dietary survey. And I say survey and not surveys because of the fact that they only did one survey, and yet the study actually had a follow-up going on of about 11.8 years. So they only asked them, what the heck do you eat at the beginning of the study? Now, the other thing that is interesting about the study is their definition of a ketogenic diet. This definition, they classified it as limiting carbs to less than 100 grams or less, or less than 25% of their total daily intake was coming from carbohydrates. And fat was classified as having energy at 45% or more coming from fat. That is a lot looser than just the standard ketogenic diet is. The other thing that was important to remember was that the participants 
that were in this study in the actual ketogenic arm, there was about 305 of them. And then as a control, they had 1,220 going on. The average age of these participants was about 54 years. 73% were women, majority were white going on. And once again, follow up, they followed them up for 11.8 years, but only asked them once in the beginning, how much do you eat? How much fat? How much stuff? And a dietary recall always has issues to begin with. So you want to know. Now, the group that was in the ketogenic diet, what was interesting was they already had either higher incidence of diabetes or higher likelihood of being a diabetic. They already had elevated BMIs at baseline. So in other words, you can think of them as already being a little bit sicker than the treatment arm. Then on top of that going on, the folks in the ketogenic arm, what they were doing was in terms of their fat was coming mostly from saturated fat. There wasn't a whole lot of healthier options that we'll talk about in a second, but it was mainly from the unhealthy sources going on compared to the standard diet group going on. So in terms of the primary outcomes, what they found was, and this is no surprise, that the keto group had significantly elevated levels of LDL cholesterol. They had higher levels of apolipoprotein B going on. Total cholesterol was elevated. And then just to verify that these folks were somewhat in the keto diet sort of realm, they had higher levels of beta-hydroxybutyrate, acetone, and acetoacetate. Now, the second sort of focus or outcome they were looking at was really the incidence of major adverse coronary events or MACE. Those were things like angina, heart attack, uh, ischemic stroke, peripheral artery disease, etc. going on. And what they found was that in the ketogenic arm versus the control arm, the ketogenic arm had a higher proportion of events going on, 9.8%, versus the control having 4.3% going on. And so the take-home message from the study was that, hey, based on our results, it seems like if you follow a ketogenic diet, you're going to have double the risk of major adverse cardiovascular events. But here's the issue. The issue is, is that's not necessarily what the study can show. One, it's a correlation study, not a causation study. Number two is their dietary recall is limited to only a single 24-hour recall. I have a hard enough time trying to remember what I ate the last 24 hours. So do a lot of my patients. So to then follow them from 11 plus years on average and to assume that they're still eating the same, that makes it a little bit difficult. The other thing is the participants in the keto arm were actually sicker to begin with. And the types of fat that they were eating were mostly saturated fats, which was expected to raise your LDL and to raise your total cholesterol going on. So they were things like lard, butter, uh, bacon, etc. going on. On the flip side, one of the things that I think the study does allude to is the fact that if you are going to do a ketogenic diet, you can make it healthier by using healthy fat sources like avocados, tofu nuts, seeds, olive oil. You know, on this channel, I've always emphasized the fact that making better choices, especially whole foods, wherever you are, makes a lot of sense. You don't have to be all the way to the vegan spectrum. Wherever you are, you can make some more choices of trying to incorporate more whole foods. And whether that's nuts, that's seeds, that's avocados, these are all great choices. That's it, guys. So I don't think the study proves anything here, but I do think that if you're going to do a keto diet, you can certainly make it better. With that, I want to thank you guys so much for checking out this episode. If you got questions, drop those in the comments below. And if you got a topic you want to hear next time, leave that in the comments as well. And other than that, I'll see you guys next time.